MH Murray and Mark Lennon. Good to see you guys. How are you? And congratulations on your movie. I don't know who you are screening at BFI Flare. Very excited. I, I'm guessing you must be. Yeah. So excited. Yeah. Can you sum up the movie for those who haven't seen it? It is a roller coaster <laughs> of emotions. It follows a young working class artist named Benjamin, who is a freelancer you know, hustling every day to make ends meet. And we follow him over the course of one weekend as he, you know, struggles to deal with a traumatic incident and um, come to terms with, you know, how that incident may or may not change his life and um, how it it's affecting all of the relationships and other things in his life. Um, it's a story of resilience and um, queer resilience and hope. Perfectly <laughs> summed up. Perfectly summed up. So Mark, you play Benjamin. It's certainly a tough subject. The subject matter, it holds a lot of emotional weight for you, I think, I'm guessing, as a, as a performer, as an actor. How did you find it playing the role? Did you take that trauma home with you as well? It must have been quite tough. You know what's funny is I remember filming it, and I don't remember while we were filming it feeling particularly emotionally, you know, um, affected. But then the moment we would wrap and I would be on my couch, I was like a zombie. And I was like, wait a minute, like this is like in the moment, you're just like, la da here we go. And then I remember like sitting on my couch after the first day we wrapped. And I remember just like sitting there and then I looked at my watch and it was like, we wrapped at like six and I looked at my watch, it was like 11. And I was like, I just sat here for four hours, like doing five hours, doing nothing. And so I think that speaks to like the, the, the weight of the film and the, you know, the intensity of it, especially some of the scenes where my character is crying and having to emote. And, you know, as an actor, you're acting, but at the same time, you're physically crying and it almost like, it's almost like your brain doesn't know that you're pretending. So you're, it's affecting your mood. But I feel very grateful to have had such a supportive space with MH and the entire crew. And they gave me all of the resources that I needed and they were so supportive. We had an intimacy coordinator on set for, some of the more challenging scenes. And I just always felt seen and, and heard and respected. And I think that's an important thing for an actor is especially when you're doing a role that requires you to be so vulnerable and requires you to bear yourself in such a immense way. I think it helps to have a team that understands that and is mindful of that. And, and I'm really grateful. What Mark is not mentioning is that we were shooting in his apartment for a lot of it. So <laughs> oh, wow. he yeah, that was his apartment, and all the art in the apartment was his, and um, he would be sitting on that couch surrounded by lights and stands and other things. So I'm sure that was like, you know. I think I think hopefully our next time working together, I will have a bit more separation. Yeah. So I <laughs> when your boyfriend says, oh, this place is amazing, I love the artwork, that's actually genuinely your place. That's genuinely my place. Yeah, yeah. he was like, yeah, it's... No I'm like, no big deal, I think. Because <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I was like, I totally agree. <laughs> I completely agree. I'd love to see see more of those rooms. I mean, it's such a great apartment. So I'm like, how can we... It's hard for me not to shoot there because it's just so... It's so cute. So no, it's, it's great. And I think in, in a weird way, it's shooting in my own apartment helped. In a weird way, it was a bit challenging because, you know, I didn't have as much space. But in a weird way, it helped me perform better because I was in the most comfortable space possible and I was in the like the first day that we we wrapped or not wrapped sorry that we filmed I was in bed I, I remember laying I remember coming out to meet everyone into like Todd and Kiki I remember going back in bed and then the cameras were set up right for me in bed and I literally just got up from bed and started acting and sometimes you didn't even get up from bed sometimes you just stayed in bed the film's got a real authenticity to it i'm, I'm guessing because it felt very fly on the wall it felt like we were really observing those situations and the conversations and those conversations seemed like real genuine conversations as well was any of it ad-libbed was it improvised <laughs> um <laughs> we had this yeah a lot so matt MH is an incredible director that really gives actors space to to improvise and to create. And, you know, there was a, an entire script going into this project and a very specific vision. But, you know, there are moments where the actors, myself included, would just improvise something or we would just like, say something. And, you know, other directors would be like, what are you doing? Whereas <laughs> MH was like, I love it, keep it. And so a lot of there's so many scenes in the movie that were not planned. Um, 
that were just sort of spontaneous acting from the actors. But he was really good at allowing us space to improvise, but also keeping us on track with the actual narrative, the actual story, um, which so much of the commentary we've gotten about this movie positive commentary is about how natural the film feels yeah. and i think a lot of that comes from the fact that he really gave us space to be natural to be ourselves and you know as much as i'm an actor and i am supposed to act as a role that's different from myself which i do yeah. it also helps when i'm able to express myself in ways that are natural to the character natural to you know and i think that helped having a director like mh who just really gave us the space to do that there was so much good little things that made it in there that were not in the script, and, and unfortunately, there were so many great little moments that weren't we weren't able to use in the final cut. But um, that's one of my favorite things as a director. I, I'm definitely more of like a, for lack of a better term, like actors director. Um, I have a great team around me uh, who handle like the more technical elements, and I think a lot about like framing. Um, and things of that nature, but when it comes to acting, I'm, I love faces, and you probably notice in the film there's a lot of like, not close up, but like you know, medium close up portrait shots of the yeah. actors. Um, I think sometimes the greatest stuff comes when you're not too too precious or too stuck in your own vision, and it is a collaboration at the end of the day. You know, like filmmaking is so collaborative, and over the years, I think I've gotten better at. Or I've just embraced, like, kind of letting go sometimes and just seeing what other people bring. And sometimes you write a line and you're like, ooh, yes, this is going to eat. And then you get on set and the actor, it's just like, hmm, it's just not feeling right. But then the actor will be like, well, what about, maybe I'll say it like this or, or this is how I would say it. And then it, it, it's this feeling that you can't really explain that you get in your gut where it feels real or it feels fake. And I think I'm always chasing that feeling of, it being real and, and uh, I've, I've gotten pretty good at not being stuck in something if I thought it was going to be a certain way but then it turns out it's not I think that's just part of being a good director and being a good filmmaker is like rolling the punches absolutely uh, could you, I, I think you disconnect if you don't believe the characters and it felt it felt very intimate to me it felt believable one actor who really leapt off the screen I think was was it Nat Patricia Manuel yeah you know, like, play Benjamin's friend Ariel I mean, such chemistry. And again, a really believable character. It felt like a friend of mine, actually. She oh, really reminded me of a friend of mine. So I think, again, it, it comes down to performances too, doesn't it? And also direction. But, you you know, you've got that believability. And she was great. Well, her audition, I mean, the interesting thing about Ariel is that when I had initially written the script, I kind of wrote it very neutral. Like, I knew I wanted them to be queer. But I was, when we auditioned, we auditioned, like, drag queens, gay men, trans women, trans men, cisgender women, bisexual women. Like we, we, we kind of made it very open and uh, Nat has this like really comfy feeling like the second, she makes you feel very safe when you're with her. And I remember the audition scene was the one when she, uh, Ariel arrives the next morning and she's like, bitch, where the, you know, like the cursing and stuff. And I think yeah. there's a way that you can curse that could feel like unnatural or like you're putting it on, but that's just like, there's a way that she said it that I just immediately believed her. And I also felt like she, she had this great, she has this great quality of like, she's able to call you out in a way that feels safe. Like she's not really trying to make you feel bad. She's just being like, girl, get, get it together. together. Yeah. <laughs> And I think everybody needs a friend like that, you know? Absolutely. She's so good. And Mark, I've got to congratulate you on your performance as well. I mean, there's so much anxiety. I kind of had sweaty palms through a lot of it because I felt like I was with you and I was kind of wanting you to succeed. And obviously you've got to raise this money. And the pharmacy scene as well, it was just so tense. What's going through your head when you're acting out in those scenes? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing at all. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, honestly, thank you so much, by the way. I, I, I'm really happy. Um, but I I think the the fact that I had M.H. Murray as a director to really guide me is amazing. And I think he created such a space for me to play and just for me to be a big kid and just to express myself and just to be a little wild and crazy. And that's one of my biggest, one of the things that's really important to me as an actor is 
I have a extremely, I don't know how to say this, but I have like an extreme ima imagination and it's always important for me to work with people who facilitate that and who don't, who are able to like, you know, nurture that and help when it's appropriate. Obviously there's a time when you need to relax, but I think having MH Murray as a director was amazing because he just allowed me to, to go there and to really throw myself into this character and to really, you know, feel all the feelings and not hold back. And, you know, like I was saying earlier, like some of the scenes were um, harder than others, but for the most part, even the most intense scene felt very, I was just acting, I was just doing my thing. And perhaps, yeah, maybe later on after in reconciling or thinking about it, I was like, okay, that was very heavy. But in the moment, I remember just doing it and feeling all the feelings and throwing myself into it. And, um, it was really as, as as stressful and as heavy as the film is. It was a really fun filming experience, and we were all having a really good time. Mostly because we were very supported. We had all the people on set to help us, you know, feel safe and taken care of. And ironically, the scenes in the movie that I would think are the hardest for me as an actor were not like the assault scene. I had so much support. So many people were like, "Are you okay? Do you need anything?" Um, scenes like that were very easy. Whereas a pharmacy scene which, you know, perhaps isn't the apex of the film in terms of, you know, there's so many other things happening, but it definitely was one of the more challenging scenes to film because it just required me to pull on emotions that I'm not really used to as an actor expressing and, you know, begging him and being very desperate and pleading. And even the physical parts, I feel really bad because um, we, I, I was like, I'm such an actor that I, I just throw myself into things that I was like, I hope I didn't hurt anyone because I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit of a wild creature. I'm like, <laughs> Throwing <laughs> things around the, around the pharmacy. It's, it's regardless of leaving set, like, ooh. <laughs> 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 so your film is screening at BFI Flair and both screenings, I think, are sold out as well. That's amazing. Yeah. Yes, but shut up. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's really exciting. I'm excited because everyone on our team has been telling us that the show is sold out. So I'm like pretending not to know, but it's so exciting to be in a new country and have such a an ex, uh, reception to this film. Because I always thought, you know, we premiered at TIFF, which is in Toronto. We're from Toronto. The film is set in Toronto. Those were sold out. I was like, okay, I get it. It makes sense. Whereas going to Glasgow and going to international audiences, whether it's in South Africa or here in the US and seeing people respond this positively is means the world to us because, you know, the people at BFI tonight are not our cousins or friends or family. They're just people who have heard about the film or heard about the story and want to support. And that means so much to us. That's amazing. Listen, it's well deserved and all the best. Are, are you managing to check out Flair? Have you managed to check out much in London already? Or how, how long have you been here? We just got here yesterday, yesterday. but we were at the, I was at the festival last night and everybody is so sweet and it's such a gay, queer vibe. I love it so much. It's and, amazing. You know, I, we're so excited to do the screening tonight and the Q&A and um, we're so excited to do it again tomorrow and then the closing night party and it seems like it's just a really cool, like a, the festival is like alive you know and yeah. I've been to a lot of festivals and sometimes they're not so alive and I feel like this one you just really get a sense that there's like a community of people that are really curious about whatever these programmers curate and I think that's one of the most special things that you can hope for as a filmmaker is that people are going to take your film and treat it with care, I guess, you know, because in this day and age, there's so many, so many things being made. Um, things kind of get thrown around and slapped around and dumped on a streaming service and maybe never heard of again. Um, so, you know, this film, obviously it's a very personal, special film to us. So we, we hoped for this and it's just been really rewarding and, um, kind of emotional like to have a project you spent so much time on be kind of taken care of in this way and sort of shepherded out into the world so we're really excited about bfi flair and also we're excited about the potential for the film to be rolled out in other countries as well it'll be out in theaters in canada and the u.s 
in the next couple of months. So fantastic, exciting. And then we'll be doing more festivals internationally. So I also think each festival reflects the magic of the city. And London is a very magical city. It's a city that really, really, really understands art. And you know, the the fact that like compared to the U.S. and Canada, where you know you have the best museums in the world here that are free, and I think the population are exposed to a higher degree of art. They're open. And, you know, there's an incredible amount of diversity. There's an incredible wealth of, you know, of different stories. And so I think going to each festival and like seeing how every audience reacts, I think London is a very special place because the audiences here are very artistically exposed, very diverse, very enthusiastic. It's a very like cosmopolitan, amazing city. And yeah, we've been here one day and he's like, listen, <laughs> I've been here before. I've been here before. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about, but yeah. <laughs> Listen, enjoy the rest of your time here and good luck with the movie. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thanks See you so soon, much. hopefully.